Welcome to Whoop with Jen. <laughs> Today, this is a two-segment episode with a special guest on this pod. I wanted to share a recent experience with you while it is fresh in my mind. My daughter loves Disneyland a lot. She finds videos of it on YouTube, is able to even track down the attractions she prefers, such as the train. When she knows she's going to Disneyland, I have to gauge how much time in advance I let her know about it, because once she does, that's basically all me or anyone else hears about all the time. It's called perseveration, <laughs> and I think it could be used as a form of nonviolent torture. <laughs> We've taken our kids to Disneyland more times than I can count. It's about a six-hour drive from Phoenix to Anaheim, and the car was always loaded up with the strollers, portable crib, luggage, sunscreen, diaper bags, wine, booze, you know, our reward after a long day at the park. When, when I was little, oh gosh, maybe around three to five years of age, Disneyland was an easy time for us. While our family had to split up because my son liked, you know, the quote unquote fun rides and Elle was scared of pretty much anything except the carousel train and small world, I could strap her in a stroller and she wasn't verbal and she didn't look too different at that time. So I could easily cart her around the park and she would take in the sounds and music and characters and colors and flowers. And the whole thing was really magical to her. And it was easy for me because aside from her feeding issues and developmental delays, we went largely unnoticed. My son eventually outgrew the park and going during school breaks no longer became an option. And that meant our family was further split because if I took Elda to Disneyland, my husband had to stay home with our son. And that type of split was different because we were six hours apart and I was solo 24 hours a day with Elle. So hey, I appreciate all you single parents out there. <laughs> I always felt like I needed a vacation when I came back from these solo trips. It just never made sense to send Greg because basically of the bathroom situation. When Elle was in diapers or pull-ups, he could use the family restroom, but as you may know, there actually aren't a lot of them, and there's always a huge wait, especially when there's the one parent who has two to three kids' diapers to change. And once Elle was potty trained, she was never really great at it to be allowed independence in a bathroom, and we weren't comfortable with her going into the men's room with her dad if there was a urinal situation because of the endless questions about, what is that? I use it? Oh, by the way, I use is a form of what we call L speak, by the way, and you'll hear that um, in this pod throughout. And we frankly didn't want her to think it was okay to be in a room where men were going to the bathroom. Don't even get me started on my fears, you know, surrounding molestation and putting her in vulnerable scenarios like most of us parents might feel about all of our children. Even today, Elle being 15, there are only certain restrooms I will allow her to go into alone. They are either single use, and that means, you know, there's a, it's a toilet and a sink, and there's a room that you can lock the door, but even then, I need to make sure she actually locks the door so no one walks in on her, or the bathrooms at places we visit a lot, like nearby restaurants, where I, I trust the staff know her, and it's a small bathroom, and I'm within eyesight of the door. I mean, I fear her for her safety all the time. And she wants the independence to do these types of things. As She'll say, I do it. I go by myself. Um, she is sassy. I mean, it's like I leave her alone in one small bathroom, and then I'm like, what are you doing in here? You've been in here for a long time, and she's pouring potpourri all over the place. It's, she's nuts. But at Disneyland... I mean, some of those restrooms are huge with long, long rows of stalls. I mean, let, if I left her alone without oversight, she would touch all the doors to see which ones are open, decides that one stall, for whatever reason, is better than another. It's always more entertaining for her to wait for someone to finish in an occupied stall than just go into the next one that's empty. Um, I mean, I'm sure people love her just, you know, <laughs> hovering outside their door while they're going to the bathroom. And then once she's in the stall, she'll play with the sanitary disposal lid because that makes a fun sound. She might just sit on the toilet and not even go because she's looking up at the lights or, I don't know, thinking about solving world crises. 
Maybe she'll conduct her business and then while washing hands, try every sink or every soap dispenser and flick water everywhere and not dry her hands because the hand dryers are loud. And of course, I mean, if I have to go to the bathroom at the same time, then she's pushing back on me because she doesn't want to be in the same stall as me. Um, but I need to have an eye on her. And then, of course, if she's, you know, pooped that day, I need to make sure she's all cleaned up so she doesn't walk around in her shit. And now that she's older, it's ridiculous for us to go into the same stall. I mean, that's like people would just think we're crazy. So I make her do her business first. And then when it's my turn, she has to stand outside my stall. I need to see her hand on the top of the door and I need to see her shoes underneath it so that I have a visual of, you know, where she is. And I can go super fast and take care of my business really quickly, but I am pretty sure people think I'm a lunatic. <laughs> not my problem. Um, we, we learn to not care. <laughs> we just got to do what we got to do. But that type of behavior is exhausting for me to deal with. And it's not volatile, aggressive, physical behavior, but it just drains energy for me because I, with the constant redirection, her arguing with me when I give instructions, I feel like I come out of the bathroom looking like I've had a rough night. <laughs> And so, no, I don't love going to Disneyland. I've been taking her, oh, Buddy just came in through the dog door. I've been taking her alone with me for maybe a half a dozen times. She knows what to look for on that drive, like crossing the Colorado River at the border. She starts losing her mind when she sees the windmills outside of Palm Springs and that stirs up her excitement because she knows we're getting closer, even if it's still two hours away. And who knows, you know, what the traffic will be like, which can be horrible in Southern California. But those last two hours, she yammers and yammers and yammers at me and wants to know why one particular windmill isn't working. I'm always supposed to have the answers. Last time I told her she'll have to ask dad when she gets home, which um, somewhat redirected her, but she was taking photos of the windmills with her iPad and then shoving it in my face and insisting I look at it. And I'm, you know, I'm driving. I just want to concentrate on that and not get us killed. And then she'll go through all the stuff she wants to do at Disneyland, which I should have informed you. She pronounced, did we win? She was, did we win? And that is more L speak. And that's how she talks. She's 15. And I know that many parents go through the excitement and perseveration with typical kids, but usually most kids grow out of it and you can reason with them or at least ground them or take their phone away. I mean, my biggest threat to Ella is to claim to walk out of the park and go home, which obviously I don't really want to do because that's a huge waste of money and time. For now, it's effective. But I'm going to have to keep thinking about other repercussions in case one day she actually calls my bluff. And don't get me wrong about wanting to make Elle happy because I do. I enjoy her innocent happiness and belief that Disneyland is real. I can predict what she'll want to do in what order and how she'll react when she sees certain characters or sees that something isn't working. She definitely has a routine. Um... Fortunately, she's outgrown my least favorite routine, which was flinging open the lids to the garbage cans on each side, which makes this horrible metal sounding flap flap. There was a time, and I mean years, when she literally touched every single garbage can, hitting each flap on both sides throughout the entire park. And I actually recorded a snippet of it. Good God. <laughs> and to think that all of the germs that she's touching, they're so gross. It's been about a year that she's graduated from that habit and sensory seeking behavior. And that is a huge victory with a capital V in my book. I, I mean, obviously, I love making Elle happy. We all love making our kids happy. But it's just sometimes I'm a little sad for myself. And it's, it's just all too real for me to recognize that she doesn't know or appreciate I'm making her happy. I mean, mo most children, they aren't expected to thank their parents for doing their jobs. She's 15. I've been doing my job with her for a while. 
And I think my son was five when he started thanking us for being granted opportunities. Maybe some kids never appreciate or thank their parents. I know I thanked my parents for taking me on trips or gifts that I got, but it wasn't until I was a parent myself that I could appreciate them for their selflessness and the life that they gave me. So these Disneyland trips, I can classify as a fun time for Elle. I will enjoy her having fun, and I have to take out of it what I can. You know, despite taking time off work to drive there and back, which takes two days, plus two to three days at the park, and that results in playing catch-up at work or working late at night on my laptop while I'm there, because the number one rule in, in the real estate business that I do now is that as soon as you leave town, buyers want to write up contracts or see homes and sellers get contracts and everything has a very tight deadline. So thank you, Wi-Fi. But I just allow myself to feel a little melancholy. And that's how I feel. I probably would love Disneyland more if I went alone or on a girl's trip and I had a chance to ride some of the rides that Elle doesn't like and, and do it for me, not just for her. And that is why at least one time... Um, whoop, whoop, a good friend of mine whose kids are all grown up and she's retired as CEO of her household. She came with me. Oh my God. I had a companion. It's been so long. I had a companion for the drive and someone to talk to while we waited in line. I had someone to have wine with at night and talk about our day. It was amazing. And I could use more of that so that I could feel like a person and not just a caretaker. So I, am I, as I'm outlining this pod, I guess my tone isn't exactly the happiest place on earth tone, um, and it might sound a little more tired and melancholy, but hey, life isn't all roses and unicorns, and these trips felt like work to me. But I want always, of course, to have, Elle have the most amazing time ever because she deserves it. We've had very good experiences at Disneyland in the past. When she was um, too little to really want to do any of the ride attractions, she would enjoy being in her stroller and just seeing all there was to see. And my husband and I would take turns with our son on the rides. We'd get four fast passes with our, all of our tickets, and we'd get to ride with Jack back to back. He would ride with Greg first, and then he'd get to go again with me. I mean, it was a super amount of fun for all of us. And then Elle started liking the kiddie rides, such as the train that goes around the park, the teacups, small world, of course, and going to see Mickey and Minnie in their houses and get their autographs. We were able to acquire what was nicknamed the Special Needs Pass. I don't know what the park actually called it. This was years ago. But you could go to Town Hall in Main Street and present that you had a child with a disability and people with physical disabilities qualified too, and explain that you needed a pass to enhance their experience due to sensitivities to sounds and crowds, et cetera, as long as you didn't indicate it had anything to do with waiting in a line. This pass allowed you to go to the exit of all attractions, present it, and be taken down the exit ramp to get on a ride. And this shaved tons of time off waiting, and it was awesome. And of course, this was just for the rides that Elle went on. But the fast pass still worked for Jack, and we could, now we could enjoy all the things at the park that we like to do, and we made some amazing memories. Well, then Disneyland had to discontinue the special needs pass as it was being abused. Unfortunately, some people have to ruin it for everyone. People would actually hire disabled folks and bring them to the park to get the pass. People would make up their child had a developmental disability to get a pass. I'm sure the list was endless, and I'm sure impossible to monitor. Who is trained to say or not say someone is disabled, which would be discrimination? I don't blame Disneyland for cutting it off, but that's about when I stopped enjoying the park. Because that was about the time Jack outgrew it, and now it was just me and Elle. And for the five rides she likes to do... We'd wait in line. All right, friends. I'm going to call myself out here. It feels like she just likes five rides, but I actually looked up all the attractions at both parks, and she will do about a third of them, which isn't too bad. They're all kiddie attractions, but at least so many adults love Disneyland. Um, she and I don't stand out in the kiddie lines, even if I get bored with doing the same thing all the time. Uh, because I'm a nerd, I did some research. 
Disney has come up with a replacement and they specifically outline it on their website for people with cognitive or emotional disorders or autism. So here are the things they suggest for you families. Number one, you can do an advanced ticket purchase. I mean, that's dumb. Duh. I I do that anyway. I wouldn't wait in the ticket line when I can buy it online. But anyways, that's a suggestion. Buy your ticket in advance. All right. Number two, they offer stroller and wheelchair rentals um, for money. Okay, great. Thank you. I never thought that would be necessary. <laughs> Ridic. Um, number three, strollers as wheelchairs. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> strollers as wheelchairs. I like this one. This one's nice. If a guest has to remain in a stroller on, a, an, on an attraction, they can treat it as the same as a wheelchair and wheel it on. So I think that's really cool, except I doubt any of those double or triple strollers would qualify, um, and they don't specify like the size of stroller. Number four, rider switch. If there are more than two of you, two adults, like two parents and one kid, one adult can ride a ride while the other adult stays back with their child who does, you know, isn't going to ride. And then the other adult can go ride without having to wait in line again. But the first rider has to wait in line, I believe. And I think the park offers this to everyone, not just, you know, special needs parents. And then number five. And this is the real replacement for the special needs pass. It's called the Disability Access Service, the DAS. So on upon arrival, you stop off at guest relations, which is either City Hall at Disneyland or the Chamber of Commerce at California Adventure. You explain your needs to a cast member. The point of DAS is to accommodate those who cannot wait in line in a conventional manner. If you receive this DAS pass, then you have to register by presenting a valid park ticket, you get your photo taken, and you accept the terms and conditions. There are more details, but essentially this works like a fast pass. At any guest relations location, you get a return time for whichever attraction you want to do, and then you do other stuff until your return time comes up. And one person can get them for the whole group. Um, I think you can have multiple people on one pass. And it, um, but the DAS person has to be on the attraction. So it's not like you can use it on other things and you can only get one active return, uh, time at a time. So to, to boil down how this helps me and my family, I mean, we always buy our tickets in advance, always have. Okay, done. We don't need a stroller anymore. So number two and number three don't help us. It's just me and L. So number four, rider switch is a no go. As for the DAS, I like that people have to be more transparent and get their photo taken and register. I like that it isn't just a piece of paper that can be abused and handed around. My biggest challenge is that Elle changes her mind all the time about what she wants to do. We might get a return time for Small World, and then while we wait, she might decide to go see Minnie in Toontown, and then the return time expires. And then Sometimes she might not want to go take the time to go to another guest service booth to get another return time for another attraction. I mean, this girl wants to explore the park on her terms because it was implanted in her years ago that that's how it's done. She is programmed to the former special needs pass. That's how she thinks going to Disneyland is. It's almost as if I need my applied behavioral analysis therapist there to predict and plan how this is going to go. It becomes work and therapy, and I just freaking want to have an easy time at Disneyland. Uh, Spoiler alert, please stay tuned for the guest segment of this pod after hearing me, because you will hear some very, very valuable advice about how to maximize the DAS and other tools for your trip to Disneyland. Um, Shame on me for not knowing. I'm not perfect, but I'm willing to learn. And this particular uh, segment is about how I don't know <laughs> shit, <laughs> but we're all gonna we're all gonna be educated later. So while when we were at the park this last trip, I saw people use the DAS, and it was awesome. I saw a ton of adults and kids with special needs have truly an amazing time. And I know nothing is perfect, and I will work on setting the expectation with my daughter for next time. I don't know if it's going to be easy. I mean, Elle has the memory of an elephant, but now it's up, you know, for me to reprogram her, of course, in my, you know, my spare time. And, and for her, I mean, explaining it is, is tough because 
um, that might not always be successful because for her, visuals are, are super huge. Later um, on their website, they say that there's other accommodations that may be available for an individual's needs. So if any of you listeners out there have some success to share, I'm all ears, no pun intended, and um, I'll definitely give it a go on our next trip. So the past few years, we haven't taken advantage of the DAS pass. And yeah, we spend a lot of time waiting in lines. I mean, I actually think it's good for my daughter to learn to wait in order to receive, which is a very good skill um, that will help her when she becomes an adult. I wish most adults had that skill. Uh, the last visit was just tough. It was spring break time and really a terrible time to visit the park when it's so busy. Uh, we had to be in Anaheim anyway for a cheer competition, so why not tack on Disneyland? Um, so inevitably, when you get masses of people and large families traveling together, it's easy to feel pushed around when there's just two of you. Every parent there, I believe, has a primary purpose to make it awesome for their kids. And sometimes common human decency gets sacrificed <laughs> because of that. Elle and I were in the small world line, and that's huge because the parade had just finished. And twice we had two huge groups of seven to eight people pass through us to meet you know, their one family member who held their place in line. Like maybe 15 people passed us. And there is nothing wrong, absolutely nothing wrong with someone holding your place in line. I would, I would do that. Um, but I don't know. It would be nice when you pushed me and my daughter aside. And I don't know, it'd be nice if you would say something instead of just pushing us. Like, I don't know, excuse me or... I need to meet my family, something verbal, because you just showed my daughter that it's okay to push through people to get somewhere and not explain why. It always amazes me how a place like Disney can make rational people lose their minds. And when it's just us and we wait in line, I always hope I don't have to go to the bathroom, which would make us get out of line and start over because I can't leave her alone. And that's kind of the rub. See, most moms get to send their kids off, see them married, hold their grandkids, but I'm going to be a mom of a young kid forever, standing in a line to a ride, I'm over, being pushed. And no one means to harm me, but it's just a reminder of how us warrior unicorn parents deal with this kind of stuff for our kids' entire life, for our entire life. So this last week when we were there, um, the monorail stopped en route twice. So I hear the constant yammering and questioning about why are we stopped? What happened? When will it go? Things you get questioned about by a three-year-old. Elle is 15. She always expects me to have the answers about stuff I don't know. I'm freaking screwed. <clears throat> and I apologize for my voice. We've all been dealing with the cold in this household, but I'm recording anyway. Elle relates to the monorail and trains by their color. <clears throat> Here's more Elle speak. I love blue one. I love orange one. I love green one. Translate, I love blue one. I love orange one. I love green one. She thinks they're alive by their color. So we were stuck on blue one once, twice on the same ride. Uh, and this is because my husband and I had discovered that the monorail to downtown Disney, um, we could go eat at a restaurant you know, so not like a park meal, like a sit-down restaurant with cocktails. <laughs> and Elle loves it. Perfecto. <laughs> uh, but Blue One stopped right after we left Tomorrowland. It did get going, but then it got stuck again right before we got to the station at Downtown Disney with like a small boom when it stopped. Endless questions from her that I did not have an answer to. What happened? Well, why we thought, stopped, she can't say S's, will we go, will we get off? Oh, I would just love to sit there in quiet and wait. <laughs> That's what I would love, is quiet all day, every day. <laughs> and then I realize I sound just like my mom. <laughs> so the next few days are all about blue one. Is it working? Is it not working? Is orange one working? I whoop orange. Then small world caps out at capacity and we're stuck, just sort of float, floating in the ride. And it's hell. It's a big hell world after all. Peppering questions from her about what's going on. And I'm trying to decide if we can jump off and make a quick exit without getting kicked out of the park. 
And then I realized that we're stopped because of the freaking 15 family members who push through us who can't figure out which way to get off of the boat despite all the arrows and exit signs. And this is where I am breathing deep, big sighs, and thanking, um, thanking goodness for yoga breathing practice. Patience. So then we do Autopia, where you get to drive your own car. And um, I don't think these are electric cars. And that is beyond me because you sit and wait in gas fumes, which to me seems death-defying, like a black diamond level. And Elle, of course, you know, chooses the worst line to wait in um, because they don't have both lines working on either side of the track. So they go half the pace. And then, um, you know, some parent lets their kid go on their own and they get stuck. So the line gets backed up for 10 more minutes. And of course, oh, the Sleeping Beauty Castle is being repainted and refurbished, which we didn't know about. And Elle is very upset. Where is Princess? Where is the castle? Why did I mess this up for her? It's my problem. Why doesn't Tinkerbell fly anymore during the fireworks on the zip line between the castle and the Matterhorn? There are huge screens covering up the castle, and Elle is super concerned. And add to that, in uh, Main Street, the last two times we visited the double-decker bus that takes you from the entrance on Main Street to the circle in front of the castle hasn't been there. She wants to know, why are the signs still for it there if the bus isn't? I mean, she has been known to give up doing something else just to wait for a bus that never comes because she thinks I'm lying to her that it won't because she's programmed. She wants to know why face painting isn't still under the monorail near the Matterhorn. I mean, it's, it's really tough because she has had experiences and they're ingrained. In California Adventure... Elle has four things that she likes to do. She wants to find Lightning McQueen and get a picture, and there is no shade there, and we melt even though we're from Arizona. She likes to watch the roller coaster take off over and over, which I think is now called the Incredicoaster, um, but it used to be called, I think, California Screaming. And they do a countdown before they launch. One, two, three, scream, and she'll stand and watch that for like endless, endless minutes. She'll do the Redwood Creek Challenge Trail, but now she's too tall for the small zip line, and that's fun to explain to her that she can't do that anymore. She'll do the Mickey Mouse wheel, and um, she'll even do the swinging gondola side, but last time someone had puked on it, and it was shut down for like 15 to 20 minutes, more on top of our traditional 30 minutes of waiting, and she is so good. Um... I mean, I'm just really proud of her, but when we finally do get on this ride, we're on a, we, you know, of course they pair you up with a couple and the guy had vertigo and he, um, was very upset and didn't look like he was going to make it. And I'm just like, if you puke, dude, just puke over that way, please don't. But he didn't puke. So that was good. Cause that would have been a whole other diatribe of a conversation. Um, so my last gripe, at least in this pod is about Rapunzel. Uh, she is L's favorite. And Rapunzel is less accessible than everyone else, making her all the more sought out after. Um, She was in the parade. She's in the parade and she has her tower. And several years ago, oh gosh, I mean, this might have been like six, seven years ago. My husband made a video of Rapunzel on the float, making eye contact directly with Elle and waving at her. And Elle lost her freaking mind. She was so starstruck. And it is one of our favorite videos ever that we have. But Elle, of course, now expects that interaction every single time and is so disappointed when it doesn't happen. I mean, I wish I could throw money at Rapunzel, like, you know, stuff it in her dress and just say, hey, treat my girl. (laughs) Um, Again, program from prior experiences. So we have to find out when Rapunzel will be available for autographs and photos, which is usually only once a day. And so we rearrange whatever else we do to see um, whom Elle, by the way, calls Rapunzel hair uh, because she can't pronounce Rapunzel. Um, So we were in California Adventure and I had to tell Elle that, hey, you can either see Lightning McQueen from Cars or Rapunzel, one or the other. And she chose Rapunzel. So we have to, of course, cross, get out of that park, go into the new park. And then you get to um, the princess area uh, chambers. And when you want to see a character... You have to wait near the line before you can actually get in the line. So you wait to get in the line to wait and be in line. 
Um, and that's usually because there's another character that has people in line. And this is very common and it usually works. And people know this. Um, a group of us parents just sort of hang out on the bridge in the shade chatting before the cast members let us officially get in line. But it has never failed that some dude walks up carrying his kid and just like gets into the front of the line as soon as they open up completely oblivious. I mean, the cast member should have shown him our way to, you know, like 20 of us waiting to get in line. I mean, we're a big group. It's pretty obvious, but you know, they don't. Um, so this dude with his daughter that keeps running away, um, not serious to see Rapunzel gets to see her first while we've been battling, um, waiting in line in, at least in the shade and not the sun. But I just, I sigh deeper yoga breaths. I, I dream of being a crotchety old lady that would have said something. Um, but again, I'm, I'm trying to be nice. People aren't aware. They don't mean to cut. And, but practicing these thoughts of trying not to be pissed off is very exhausting. Um, and of course there's this whole star Wars thing that they're building that people are freaking out about. Elle doesn't know or like Star Wars. She will never want to go there, but I'm realizing that once it opens, we'll be paying more money for tickets and dealing with larger crowds for something that we won't enjoy. I mean, if I was going to be real, I would love it if we could just pay a smaller fee to do the few things that she wants to, which of course is impossible to regulate for the company. Um, and it isn't the happiest place on earth. It's the most profitable, right? I know that's snarky, but I'm saying it anyway. Because I used to be a CPA, I wonder <laughs> how many people work there? What do they get paid? Do they wash their costumes? How sweaty do they get in the parade? How many hot dogs get sold? How many pretzels? Those huge turkey legs? Like, what do they do with the rest of the turkey body? Do they just buy the turkey legs? How many people eating this crap have diabetes or pre-diabetes? How many tons of garbage is hauled away and where does it go? I mean, this is what I think about. Not princesses or Disney stuff, but literally, I have to occupy my analytic mind with real stuff while I'm there. And that's not saying I ha I'm not capable of checking out and being free. I mean, I can totally do that in a place like Hawaii or Costa Rica but Disneyland for me is more of a trip than a vacation. And it's a little bit of work too. At security, um, before you even get into the park, they make parents open up their gazillion diaper bags and backpacks and take everything out to explore them um, and make us safe. Great. I am all for safety. It takes forever, but I find it ironic <laughs> that... They don't seem to check water bottles to see if it's really water, not vodka. <laughs> I mean, next time I'm seriously considering bringing vodka just to see what happens. I've been saying this for years, um, but I do want to tell all of you Disney parents that California Adventure does serve beer and wine. Um, so plan to do Magic Kingdom in the morning and California Adventure in the afternoon or evening or take the monorail to downtown Disney. Hey, cheers. You deserve it. <laughs> During... All of this, and we're talking two to three days of this, you know, um, bookended with a long drive through the desert. <laughs> Elle notices nothing of what I observe. And so for that, she is a lucky, lucky girl. It is magical to her. And after this last trip, I wish I didn't feel frustrated enough to record this, but I feel like she's being disserviced. This is not a cheap trip to the local zoo. It doesn't just cost the travel, lodging, and park tickets and gas, but it's unpaid time off work for me as a self-employed person. It's a very long, boring drive. And it's extremely exhausting to make it a great time. I know I haven't properly explored <laughs> how to maximize the Disney experience. Um, and I'm relying too much on our former um, trips there to be repeat experiences just as much as Elle does. And I bet many of you listening have had way, way better times than I have had, and that is awesome. In the next segment on the same pod, my guest will share many great ideas of how to make it a wonderful trip. I reached out to her uh, after I got back because I wanted to love Disneyland 
as much as Elle does. And I got to tell you, after hearing from her, I have been schooled. I always have promised transparency on this pod and that it would be real. So maybe many of you can relate to my experience, or I'm just a horrible freak. But I love hearing other people's perspectives and changing mind. This is what we warriors do. We learn from our mistakes and we ask for help. And we all have much to share with each other. So please keep listening in this brief pause for the next segment. And think, do you think they will ever inspect the water bottles for vodka? Whoop, whoop. This is Jen. Hang in there. Okay, and we're back to Whoop with Jen. And I am super excited because, as I mentioned at the end of that last segment, that I was going to have a friend of mine here to talk about how you can actually have the most wonderful experience at Disneyland. Welcome, Jessica. Thank you so much for having me. So excited to be here. I'm excited for you to be here. Um, You're a pro at Disneyland. (laughs) I like to think so. (laughs) And um, you've also just launched on a new adventure, um, which we're going to talk about. But... um, you know, I won't go into a ton of detail, but our last trip to Disney was a little bit rough with me and Elle, mostly due to her and I being kind of alone and her um, limited desire to participate in a lot of attractions. And I did kind of go over some of the things that they offer on their site. And they do have a whole section on the Disney site on preparing for a trip. They do. do have. Yeah. And for disabilities, different disabilities. Yeah, they're pretty comprehensive. It was a lot. Yeah. (laughs) It is a lot. It can be overwhelming for parents who don't know what to expect, don't know how to plan, um, and don't know how their children are going to react. I mean, it's one thing to go to Disneyland and not know what to expect, but when you have a child with special needs and you're not sure how they are going to deal with um, the crowds and the noises and the rides and, I mean, excess stimulation, right? (laughs) It it can be really overwhelming and, and scary. So I don't. I don't want families to feel like that because Disney is a magical place if you put a little time and effort and into planning and preparing. So how would you plan and prepare? And there's kind of a couple different scenarios because there's the first time mm-hmm. Disney traveler. Absolutely. And this could go across people who have kids with disabilities or just people who are going for the first time ever. Yes. And then there's also the repeat or return planner where there's already been an experience that's happened and how to plan for it possibly not being an exact replica of that experience. So how would you recommend families in both scenarios? Um, Well, I think the first thing um, for families who are going for the first time, again, whether they have children with special needs or not, is to make sure you have enough time to really enjoy the parks. I understand it's extremely expensive to go um, and stay and eat and do all the fun things. So it does take some saving savings for most of you know the average American family I would think Um, but making sure that you have enough time allows you to really enjoy what there is to offer and not feel rushed that oh my gosh we only have one day to go to both parks and we didn't get to go on um, it's a small world or Soren or anything like that so making sure that you have enough time to really um, just kind of absorb it all and take it in I think is key to having a fantastic time. So are you talking about the number of days that you would spend there? And what do you think about actually making time to go to both parks or focusing on maybe just the Disneyland side of it? Sure. Well, again, it's going to depend on on your the the amount of time that you do have um, and and the money that you are able to invest into this trip. Um, So if you only have one day at Disneyland and you want to focus just on Disneyland, I think that's fine. You're going to have an amazing time. Um, I think it's important then to take things into consideration like the Max Pass, which is an additional, I think they've bumped it up to now $15 per person per day, but it's like um, a fast pass that you can do on your phone. It allows you to book more um, attractions closer together and you don't have to go to a kiosk and get those paper tickets or anything like that. So, And I saw people using that on our last trip because yeah. they would walk up to the attraction with their phone. And I'm like, what are you what are you guys doing? I'm missing out on some secret here. Yeah. So can you tell me a little bit more about how it works? It's, is it an app that you download and then you 
how do you link it with your ticket or pay for it? Exactly. So it, it's through the Disneyland app. So if you don't have the Disneyland app, definitely get that. Um, and once you get in the park perimeter, you can purchase the Max Pass for you and for everyone um, in your party. And you can link all the tickets and the Max Passes uh, to one phone. So um, I think you can link them to multiple phones as well. But if you wanted to um, have it all, like usually it's on my phone, and then I'm the one that's responsible for booking the next attraction. And it's great because you can go on and you can say book, book a Max Pass and it'll tell you times It'll give you the option of the park, and then it'll give you times uh, for the rides, you know, say within 40 seconds, or 40 <laughs> Again, minutes. Again, I thought I was <laughs> muted, but apparently I wasn't. <laughs> Keep good? going. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm muted now. <laughs> yeah. So you can see within, you know, 40 minutes, you can get on Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, or, you know, in an hour and a half, you can get on Haunted Mansion. And it gives you that option to see what's available um, the soonest and then make that selection. And then it'll tell you in an hour or usually it's right when you're able to get on the next ride is when you're able to make um, that next fast pass selection. So it's one pass. at a time, just like the fast passes. But what I'm so if I understand it correctly, you don't have to actually go to the attraction and see the sign where they've put the wait times. You Correct. can see it on the app Absolutely. so you can prioritize and figure out. And you can see wait times on the app without the Max Pass. That's just the beauty of the app is they have, right. they. I could go on right now and get really jealous that I'm not there because there's only a 10 minute wait at Haunted Mansion <laughs> or something. <laughs> well, and what I also liked about the app, um, and I didn't have the whole Max Pass part of it, because I, I'm not a planner. I just sort of fly by the seat of my pants. So maybe that's why, you know, my, my Disney experience is always a little harried, but I can see where the characters are. And I like that because Elle only really cares about a few characters, and some of them are only available once a day, sure. like Rapunzel. And you can see where they're going to be and when, and then you can actually see if they're like roaming around yeah. the park too, which That's is kind of cool. fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So it, it just offers a lot of um, um, ability to kind of see and project into the future and, and see where you want to be, what you want to be doing. Um, so I think I think taking that time um, and making sure you have enough time to really enjoy the parks is key uh, for for those first timers especially, and for those repeat customers, um, again it's based on what do, what are your goals for the trip? What do you want to get out of? What does each person in your family really want to do? You know, get that bucket list going and making making sure that everyone's able to do what they want to do. Um, so timing again is key. Well, and I think and I. I'm getting really good ideas from you on how to make the most out of our next trip because my daughter loves iPads and iPhones. I have the app, mm -hmm. and so I could very easily get her on the app and tell me the things that she wants to do and and help her understand that we'll get, do most of them, mm -hmm. but there might be some things that we that aren't going to be available. Mm -hmm. You can usually see in advance when an attraction's down for refurbishment, Absolutely. but uh, but sometimes there's last minute things. There's always things that happen. I think once you involve people in the mix, mm -hmm. you know, Disneyland can run as efficiently as they want to, but <laughs> you throw families in the mix, things are going to You add up. a puking child onto <laughs> Mickey's fun wheel. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. And then you've got your delay and that's, you know, that's just going to happen anywhere with any, any theme park or any, any place that you're exploring. You, you can always throw a wrench into the and into the whole game plan and it kind of changes things um, but I think with my daughter with Emma giving her some power and some the ability to choose what she wants to do um, kind of really helps her plan her trip there and if you have a child who has a little bit um, more of a difficult time kind of going with the flow because um, a lot of our special needs kiddos you know thrive on routine and structure um, making sure that you know days in advance or weeks in advance you're looking at the website um, the great thing about the website too is we can see for example like the castle is under refurbishment right now and um, you can see like if you're gonna go back in June will it be up and finished or will it still be down so they do have like long-term refurbishment plans that a lot of times you can see on 
uh, the, the website, not set in stone, but does help kind of give some guidelines too. Um, another tool I really like to use for kiddos is, is YouTube. There are so many YouTube videos on their favorite rides or their favorite attractions or anything like that just to help them kind of get a little bit um, more of an understanding of what they can expect. And if you have a child who maybe is set on, I want to see um, the, the princesses and the parades and the lights and the shows and maybe not so much the rides, maybe giving them a goal. Let's try to go on It's a Small World. It's a great ride. Here's the video. You can see exactly what it looks like and maybe giving them little goals um, to make sure that everyone else in the family is still having a good time and seeing what they want to see too. So how old is Emma now? Emma's 15. And how long have you been taking Emma to Disneyland? Gosh, the first time she went, I think she was eight months old, maybe 10 months old. Um, and what was it like? And you can also explain a little bit to everyone about what her disabilities or needs sure. are. Yeah. So the first time we went, you know, she was in a stroller and it was just more for me. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> I hadn't gone in a couple of years since I'd been pregnant and everything like that. Um, uh, but it was fun. We made the most of it, of course. Um, so Emma is 15. She was born with um, a condition called optic nerve hypoplasia. And basically that means she doesn't produce any of her own hormones. So we give her hormones in the form of pills and injections every single day. Um, she also has um, a seizure disorder. She's been having seizures since she was two and a half. Um, she also has op um, sorry, hip dysplasia. So she, when we go to the park, she's in a wheelchair because her hip... Um, she's had four major surgeries on her hip, and it gets really fatigued. Oh, I can only so imagine. So she's in a wheelchair. Um, and she's got um, mild cognitive disabilities, or I guess I should say moderate um, cognitive disabilities. Um, so while she's verbally can give attitude and sass right back, um, cognitively, academically, she's maybe at a kindergarten, first grade level. Um, but she can definitely, she makes up for it in her verbal skills because she tells me exactly what she wants when she wants it. And she, <laughs> she's 15. And, and our daughters are the same age. And yeah. I have to say that they are typical in every way a stubborn teenage yeah. girl can be. 100%. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Which is, you know, at least we can say we have that going for us. Uh, I, I, I hope it'll be over someday. I know, well, that too. But yeah, when I when she's going through one of her moments, I'm like, okay, this is typical for her age. This is, let's, let's count our blessings for the typical age-appropriate behavior she's experiencing right now, even though I want to run for the <laughs> glass of wine, <laughs> bottle of wine. <laughs> Which they have in Disney California Adventure, by the way. They do. Thank you. Thank you for looking out for those parents. <laughs> um, so I wanted to learn a little bit more about your experience taking her to the park. I don't know if she had some initial fears or there were some attractions that you've worked with her successfully to get her to go on. My daughter is very limited mm -hmm. in what she wants to do, which limits my experience. Sure. Um, and that's what we do as parents. We sacrifice for absolutely, our kids. Absolutely. Um, but we should also have fun too because we're footing the bill for it. <laughs> so just share a little bit about some successes that you had with the planning and getting her to be prepared to try new attractions, especially since you have a very um, adventurous son, younger yes. son as well. Yep. Um, so Emma, if I again, if I can give her some of that control, um, and and give her the tools to research and look up where we're going, wherever that may be. For example, she's going to Florida in a couple weeks. She started planning for that trip like six months ago. Uh, so she likes to know what's going to be happening, what to expect and all that, and I think that just helps her feel more comfortable. Um, so I've always kind of given her that ability to look into wherever we're going and kind of create her own game plan. Um, she's always loved rides and I think that's part of her visual disability. She's legally blind in one eye um, and she um, gets a lot of stimulus from from the verbal or the uh, visual cues that she gets from around her um, and so she's always loved rides and the fast ones the faster the better but she's interestingly nervous about like the Incredicoaster which goes upside down she doesn't like that part or will she go on it though she's gone on it like three times we have pictures and i'm like emma you liked it last time remember here's the picture in the frame um she doesn't like guardians of the galaxy or uh yeah guardians of the galaxy i don't like that right um i, I <laughs> did it she's been on it once or twice because i kind of forced her to go on it she didn't like it so i don't force her to go on it anytime or anymore um 
But say Soren, the one that's kind of like the flight simulator, you would think she would love it because it's just visual and, and it's not a roller coaster, but she just um, has a really weird, irrational fear about it. But I told her last time we were there, Emma, we're doing pretty much everything you want to do. Let mommy have a ride that, you, that, that she likes. You like this ride. I'm not sure what has changed, but you have liked it in the past. We're going to go on it and it's going to be okay. <laughs> this last time... She's like, Mom, my hip hurt. Both of my hips hurt, and it's really, really bad. Was it her hip or her head? Anytime anything hurts, I'm always like, okay, okay, Children's Hospital OC is, it real? is like, <laughs> right, I'm thinking, like, where's the clear, the nearest um, Children's Hospital? And, yeah, and then she, she told me, oh, I was just joking because I didn't want to go on Soren. I'm like, girlfriend, <laughs> she had a stern talking to. I'm like, you don't joke about your physical right. ailments and freak me out right because we're going to leave the park and go to yeah, the hospital exactly so do you want to do that exactly exactly i'm like we're going on soren right now you're going to suck it up and she you know she says i'm like just close your eyes the whole time it'll be fine now i get some kids are not like that they would have a complete and utter meltdown i get that um but it's about knowing your kid and their limits and sorry and then being able to um um, kind of adapt around that and, and see if they can compromise as well. And, and I think that's, it's so interesting because I know a variety of kids that have no issues with rides. And it's interesting because my daughter has sensory seeking behavior and a lot of children who like those rides have sensory seeking behavior because it gives them the sense of flight mm -hmm. or freedom or you know they're flying and my daughter is absolutely terrified which is insane because when this girl learned how to swing on a swing set she was going as high as she could go to the point where the staff at the school playground were terrified yeah <laughs> that she was going to fly right off and right. she loved it yet she went on soren once as a little girl and it absolutely traumatized her forever to the point where she will stand with her arms crossed in front of the ride and have a meltdown yeah. over how she's not going to go on it. So we don't go on it. Sure. Um, and I just think that it'd be interesting because Disney has such a good site. You know how they um, code ski runs? Like it just might be interesting to see if they can kind of code what might be a sensory mm -hmm. ride or, you know, what's going to be dark or what's going to be That's a great loud. Idea, I do absolutely. think obviously YouTube videos for sure help. Yeah. Um, but my daughter won't try anything new yeah. and but i'm going to work with her on the youtube videos i'm going to ask i'm going to tell her that she has to try one new thing mm -hmm. the next time we go absolutely and you said she likes small world she loves um, small world so does she like the <laughs> other dark sweet dark sweet rides in nope. fantasy land none of those nope she won't go on like peter, peter pan, pan um pinocchio snow pinocchio. white she won't even go on dumbo which is which it isn't even enclosed, yeah. but she's afraid to go up high. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so I think giving her a goal and rewarding, you know, listen, I am not above bribery, okay? Let's just <laughs> bribery <laughs> works very well in our it household. Would, it works, and it makes us happy, and it's I'm okay with it. Um, and so saying, okay, well, you know what, let's give ourselves, and maybe she can, she associates Fantasyland Dark Ride Suites with scary and we don't like it, but what about... Winnie the Pooh, The Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. That's all the way across the park. Same kind of ride, just Winnie the Pooh, and giving her that, giving that to her as a goal. And then, right. you know what? Pooh's Corner is right, right after the ride, and we can go get, you know, whatever her favorite treat is, or something right. like that. Um, because I think that I don't, I don't think that's a bad thing, and I think that's helping her ex expose her to new experiences and showing her that it's. It's not all bad and look at you survived and you loved it and the music was great and what was your favorite part of the ride and and it just gives more opportunities to talk about the experience well I think that's a good idea for almost everything mm -hmm. as we train these individuals into adulthood and trying new experiences um, I, I actually am now excited to go back because I think I will look at that Winnie the Pooh ride and see if she'll go on it. And then if I can get her on it, take a video of her on it, put that on her iPad so that she can watch herself being successful at something over and over again because Absolutely. she loves to see That's a fantastic pictures of idea. herself. Absolutely. Who doesn't like to watch pictures or videos of themselves? <laughs> Absolutely. I think that's a great idea. Me before I put my makeup on. Yeah. <laughs> 
true, true. Um, but yeah, giving her that trophy, if you will, that visual trophy of, oh my gosh, you did it and you liked it. And you know, that that's just one of my most favorite rides. I just love that ride so much. It's so sweet. But um, um, and then walking through, you know, Pooh's Corner afterwards for that little treat or just, you know, the, the prize of it all being that video that she can watch of herself enjoying the ride. I think that is a great, um, a great trophy, if you will. Great ideas. Yeah. I do want to mention, too, about um, food allergies. Um, I don't know if Ella has any food allergies or sensitivities. She doesn't, um, but... You know, we used to have her gluten-free for a long time. She doesn't have celiac disease, but I felt like it affected her behaviors. Mm -hmm. And so at home, she's primarily on a gluten-free diet. It's, I haven't seen a lot that's available at Disneyland. I feel like we just go and have the worst food when we're there. One year we tried to eat like all the veggies and the hummus and the pretzels and the kids looked at us like we were absolutely yeah, insane. Like, where's my churro, mom? <laughs> <laughs> or a soft pretzel. Right. Um, but no, we don't We don't have that issue, okay. but I imagine a lot of families have that with nuts and strawberries yes. and other things. I don't know, Does do you have to be pretty careful when um, you go? You know what? They're they're really great about dealing with food allergies and sensitivities. Emma is um, right now gluten free. She's been gluten free for f- uh, five and a half years, um, and we took that out of her diet just to see if that would help with her seizures, and it helped tremendously. Um, in fact, a couple of weeks ago, she had a cookie that had gluten in it on accident. She thought it was gluten free, and the next day she had a, had a seizure. Oh my so goodness. we know now that in There's fact that is still yeah, it's still a trigger for her. Disney is great. Um, the, a, a couple different things. You can look on their website to see what they offer. Um, and then I believe on their app you can you can find locations for different allergies, whether it's nuts, dairy, or gluten. Um, what I love right now is they have mobile ordering. Um, so I don't have to wait in those really long lines at the counter to order and then pick up the food. I can order right on my phone through the app. I can tell them that I want a gluten-free bun on her burger and um, I can customize it that way. And then, especially with those allergies, they have the chef come out and give it to you um, so that it's just another added layer of assurance that they're taking care and they understand that there are food allergies and sensitivities. Um, and it just, it kind of makes me feel better knowing that they're taking that, that those precautions that are necessary. Um, so I really wanna let people know about that mobile uh, ordering option on a lot of the quick service um, counters that you can order food from. It's a really great, really great thing that they've introduced. Sounds like they've been listening to customer feedback. Well, and the lines are just so long. The lines are <laughs> incredibly long for food. Yes. I, I don't understand how long, how it takes so long to, to order food for a family of four and pay for it. And I don't know why those lines are so long, but they're I, good practice for the other lines. It is good practice for the <laughs> other lines and a good dose of patience is needed. Um, and practice of patience is always, you know, it's you're always practicing patience in Disneyland. I call uh, my experience to Disneyland, not just my practice and patience, but it's like, Costco during snowbird season mm. on steroids. Yeah. Because we live in Arizona and Costco can be a complete nightmare. During, on on a Saturday afternoon. Yeah. During the lunch hour when <laughs> everyone's getting their free, um, free samples. samples. <laughs> it is. It's always it's always in order, uh, you know, definitely a test of patience. Um, I like, again, that they have games now on the Disney app that you can play while you're waiting in line. They have a heads-up game. Um, well, not them, but um, Ellen DeGeneres' heads-up game. Um, is a lot of fun. My son and I will play it, or we'll do I Spy with Emma. Um, so just, you know, trying to come up and create or research other games to play while you're waiting in line can really help minimize that time. But if you have the DAS Pass, which is the Disability Access Service, that is a pass that you can get at Town Hall in Disneyland. Um, you can get at, um, oh my gosh, it's slipping my mind. Where oh, you I get have it. it. At... I, I mentioned it earlier in the pod in California Adventure where yeah, you get it. Yeah, yes. Um, I'll, and... I'll refer and look that back up. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I can't think of it right now. Um, you can also get it at the kiosks now. And I've heard that there's better luck at the kiosks to get to really? the pass uh, um, as opposed to waiting in the long line at Town Hall. It's a, and it can be really It can be lengthy. really long. And those people have been hearing, you know, these 
stories and sob stories and whatever from different parents and pe people all day long and I feel like they probably get a little tired of it so I've had a really great success going to the kiosk to get the disability access service um, now can they take your picture at the kiosk because I thought that they had to register you with it so that they yeah they can sure take your picture at the kiosk it wasn't getting abused okay. yes yes and uh, from what I remember, you can have up to eight people on one pass. So if Emma and I are there um, and we have the rest of our family and some friends, we can have up to eight people. Okay, it's um, at the Chamber of Commerce in thank California you. Adventure. Yes, yes, Chamber of Commerce. Um, and that is a really great service um, that allows guests who have trouble waiting in line and sit, standing in still in one place or being just kind of surrounded by a bunch of strangers, um, the ability to wait at a place that's more um, comfortable for them, or walking around simply the park, and then going back and going through the fast pass line, or going through the exit in some of the rides. Um, so it's the DAS pass um, is not what it used to be. Um, it used to be a lot more, it, it used to give guests a lot more freedom. Um, and shorter lines, um, but it was abused quite a bit, and they had to change it. So. And, and it just breaks my heart that some people have to selfishly ru ruin something that is so necessary. Mm -hmm. But I do like, you know, the, da the DAS isn't ideal for us, as, as I mentioned earlier in my earlier segment, but I really do like that there's more accountability and hopefully less abuse of it by people because you have to register you have your photo taken it's yes. not a piece of paper like the old one that was handwritten that could be passed around to yes. essentially anyone, anyone. Uh, so I, I appreciate that they're trying to make efforts and I think what you've really helped me with is just how to maximize the time that we have when we're waiting because my daughter unfortunately is programmed to be using the special needs pass mm -hmm. because that's what she, she was grew used up to on. yeah and so that's what she expects and when to go and get a pass to come back at a later point in time, she wants to do it then. Mm -hmm. And so th that's a goal that I'm going to work on with her is setting that expectation that we're going to do this mm -hmm. while we're waiting to do this and help her understand the time frame of when we need to go back. And hopefully I can manage it. Yeah. How long is the window of time that they give you to come back? Is it pretty generous so that you don't you know, it's an hour it. after it, so I think it is pretty generous and honestly I think they're even more lax than that if you miss it by 15 minutes after that hour window I think they're still gonna be okay you know because they I still I feel like they're doing the best they can uh, with the technology and the abilities that they have to accommodate those guests with special needs um, and so I, I feel like I've always run into really accommodating cast members who have been really nice. The other thing I like about the DAS Pass, you can use it in conjunction with the Max Pass. So there have been times where I've had three rides in my queue ready to go on, um, already reserved, if you will. Um, so I can go back and go on those rides. And if um, Emma and Emma helps me choose which rides to go on, obviously she pretty much has the say on which rides we're going to go on. <laughs> Let's be honest. Um, but yeah, but uh, I don't mind any of them. I'm just happy to be at Disneyland. Um, but, um, you know, an idea for Elle might be to get a timer on her iPad or her iPhone, uh, maybe a kid-friendly timer, that you set that timer. And if she asks, okay, when can we go back? You say, well, you know what? Let's look at your app your timer app and see how how many more minutes we have to wait and here's what we can do while we wait we can you know look at the rivers of america or we can you know people watch in front of the castle that's under refurbishment <laughs> you have so many good ideas i feel kind of stupid no, <laughs> like i haven't been enough. making the most out of our disney trips no, because i've been winging it well winging it is fun and there's times when i wish i could be spontaneous but i'm a virgo and i just it's just not in my nature so planning is kind of you know what i do what i'm really good at and it's what i do by nature just ask my husband and he'll roll his eyes and you know he's like be more spontaneous i'm like i, I can't Girl, um, after my own heart <laughs> uh and so um you know giving her and she's you know emma's really just an apple falling off this tree because she's the same way she likes to plan 
She likes, uh, she can be spontaneous, but it, it might be harder for her. Um, and so that might, that might work out for Elle when you, you could even have like a visual um, chart. I think this is a great idea. I used to do this for Emma in the mornings for school, not for Disneyland so much, um, but having um, just a piece of paper laminated whatever my Disney day and taking the attractions and the rides that she loves and having velcro strips and being able to reorganize or those and then reorganize those if plans change and then she's got that visual calendar Emma's a visual learner and yep. so she needs that absolutely um, the vis visual learning is key for is her key. and so creating a visual calendar outlook of what the day is going to look like that can be really great because again with that max pass and the DAS pass you have the ability to kind of move things around say oh my gosh Elle, we could go on small world in 10 minutes and then come back and go to lunch or something like that is there information on the Disney website to help someone learn how to use those passes prior to getting to the park so that they're not figuring it out Yes. When they get there. <laughs> there is, yeah. They've got information on their website. I'll be honest, the first time I used the Max Pass, I'm like, I don't think I'm doing this right. So I went into a store, I think it was the photo store, and they helped set it up for me um, because I, I was having a little bit of a tough time. But yeah, that was within weeks of them launching it. So I didn't know much about it going into it. Yeah. Um, and so they're really helpful there. They are. Um, and I also feel like, you know, when you, um, you can catch more flies with honey than vinegar, you know, I always go... And with just a really um, happy, bubbly attitude to the best of my ability, no matter what kind of morning we may have had at the hotel. Um, and just, you know, giving them the courtesy the, and the respect and the kindness that they deserve. Um, and I always get that in, in return. I've really never run into um, a cast member that has been rude to me. And, and um, yeah, I know they're out there. They're human, too, and they have those bad days. And so... But I really feel like if I can extend the kindness and the warmness, then they'll give that back to me. I think the company is known for training their employees to make sure that it is a magical experience. Yes. Um, is there, before we kind of talk about your new adventure, yeah. is there anything else you would like to offer listeners on how to maximize their trip? I, I just think that you, taking some time to plan and to look into what, what you guys all want out of it. Um, is really key um, and it takes the spontaneity out of it but are you there for spontaneity or you want to make sure you ha you're having a magical right. time and I think because I, I treat it like I'm taking L to the zoo which yeah. we've been to a million times and we don't we can go back again and it's very cheap because our membership is very inexpensive mm -hmm. But with Disneyland, it's like planning a trip to Europe. I think you have to figure out what you want to see, mm -hmm. how you're going to organize it and set the expectation mm -hmm. and yeah. then obviously occupy. Absolutely. You know, with that, you know, if they have a short attention span. And there's also one thing I noticed on their website, they had a list of all these different places where you could go and just sort of take a break mm -hmm. if it became too much. Oh, interesting. I, I'll have to look into that. I know they have the baby station, um, which I don't know how quiet or calm that is going to be, but I do know like around the parks, they have little quiet kind of nooks and corners that you wouldn't normally expect. Um, and so it's nice to kind of get a break from it all because it is so overstimulating and just to people watch or just to, you know, just to sit down and, and relax for a minute and kind of regroup. Right. One of the things that we do, not too late in the day because it gets really busy, but just getting on the train that goes around the entire uh, circumference of the park. Absolutely. Elle could ride that like five times in a row. She, first of all, she loves trains. Yes. And it gives her a chance to sit and take a break. You're in shade, which is really nice. Yes. And she gets to see aspects of the park. Yeah, absolutely. I love the train too. Emma loves the monorail. Um, love the monorail. She, yeah, she loves the monorail. And she could sit in that and just go circles around. And I kind of like that too because then you kind of get to see the entire um, Disneyland Resort, mm -hmm. you know, from a bird's eye view. Um, and then Small World, um, albeit loud is is one of my favorite rides because again you're in the dark ac you're off your feet for a minute and it just is nice to to uh take in it that ride it never ceases to amaze me every time i am on that ride and i've been on it a lot yeah. i always see something new that i haven't seen before and then l noticed on this last trip that alice was missing from the alice in wonderland oh section of the right and she kept pointing at it and she's hardly hard to understand with her um, verbal limitations but darn if she didn't figure out that Alice was 
missing. Yeah. And our kids are so observant. <laughs> I know I don't give Emma enough credit. And so I think that's fantastic when they're, you know, that's just something to talk about or to say, hey, did you see anything new on that ride or is anything missing on that ride? Um, and, and just give them more opportunities to talk about their experiences is n- never a bad thing. Well, let's tell everyone what you're working on now with your Yeah, so I'm really excited. Program. Um, I don't know why I didn't do this earlier in my life, to be honest. Um, but you're raising two children? Maybe, but I, or maybe I just didn't think I could do it. I didn't know what it took to, to become one, but I am now with Magical Vacation Planner. It's a travel agency group, and I can now help you plan Disney vacations um, that suit your lifestyle, your needs, um, and uh, it's not limited just to Disney. I can do Disneyland, Disney World, uh, Adventures by Disney, Alani in Hawaii, and Disney Cruises. Um, but I can also book other vacations, um, Royal Caribbean cruises, Princess Cruises, um, Sandals and Beaches, um, a whole host of other uh, fun adventures for you and your family. And I think um, what I'm most excited about is to just really be able to give people the opportunity to experience Disney or other vacations um, like I am used to And do you do this over the phone with people or is it over the internet how do you work with someone to plan their trip I can we can chat over the phone we can do all email we can text if you're in the um, Phoenix area we can meet certainly Um, but I whatever is easiest for you works for me awesome yeah well I think for anyone who hasn't been to the park or maybe they haven't had a positive experience like my recent one um, that that would really help someone you know get on board and have the ability to really plan and prepare for their trip well I think and it's absolutely yeah. free it's absolutely free <laughs> absolutely it's of, of no cost to the traveler by any means um, and I think what what will give me that special edge is that I have so much experience with special needs and Disney um, and I can really help um, give some insight to um, Disneyland, um, and I'm working on Disney World, um, for those families who have children with special needs who, who need those extra accommodations and considerations. Well, that's awesome. Thank you. I'm, exci- I'm, I'm excited, excited for you. <laughs> I love to plan, and I love Disney, and so it just kind of makes sense, I feel like. It that's does awesome. make a lot of sense. Yeah. Then you can help other people have a magical experience. Absolutely. I mean, what more goal. can you hope for? you got to feel good about yourself at the end of the day, right? Well, I just, yeah, and then I get a little jealous that they're going to Disneyland, and I'm not right now, but that's okay. Like, <laughs> that's what I'm working towards is, is um, helping, helping families just experience that magic. Well, Jessica's services are Magical Vacation Planner, and she's on Facebook at Jessica, the MPV, oh, MVP, I am dyslexic, (laughs) Jessica, the MVP is on Facebook, and then she's on Instagram, which is Jessica dot the MVP, Um, and I also have this in my tagline, so I hope uh, everyone out there is going to be as huge of a Disney fan yeah. as she is. I will get back on board. I'm actually really excited to help plan and make my next experience the most accessible I'm for and magical you. one. Yeah, hopefully, if I can give other families tools and ideas to help them have the best time ever, then then I've done my job. And if you're interested in learning more about my services, you can find me on either one of those handles. And I'll type it correctly. (laughs) Well, thanks for joining me today. This was fantastic. And to all you friends out there, whoop, whoop, this was Jen. I wanted to do a little add-on after we heard from our magical vacation planner, Jessica, about my takeaways and my commitment to make our next Disney trip incredible. Yes, I will plan and let Elle be a part of what we'll do. I'll set an expectation with Elle with YouTube videos to do at least one new ride and I'll lay out how we can use the DIS pass and how first you get the pass, do one activity and go back and do the ride using a timer so she'll know how long she has to wait. And for the rides that she likes to go on, I'll do that max pass because doing it on the phone without having to go to the attraction is time saving and I love saving time so much. It's my favorite thing. And I'll work with Elle on playing games on the phone when we're in line. I mean, there's a million takeaways that I got from Jessica, but for right now, for those, I think I've bitten a lot lot off. I still think my largest problem is going there solo with her, and I would love to hear from parents who've had similar experiences and success stories. Please share them with me. Let's share them with everybody. 
message me on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook. Whoop with Jen. Thank you, you magical unicorn warriors. Whoop whoop. This is Jen. <laughs>